we're going to be looking at the Doppler effect. Here we have a stationary source of waves emitting waves of frequency F and an observer who is in front of the source of waves or behind the source of waves, they will detect the same frequency that is emitted by the source. Here you have a moving source of waves still emitting waves of frequency F. However, an observer in front of the source, so the source is moving towards the observer, the observer will detect a higher frequency or a shorter wavelength. However, if the observer was behind the moving source of waves, as the source of waves is moving away from the observer, the observer will detect a lower frequency or longer wavelength. And so this change in frequency or wavelength of the waves between a source and observer that are moving relative to each other is called a Doppler shift. So we have source S emitting waves of wavelength lambda and observer O that detects wavelength prime, lambda prime. And if the source and the observer are stationary, then the observer will detect a wavelength that will equal the wavelength that is emitted from the source. So lambda prime will equal lambda. However, if the source of waves is moving towards the observer, the observer will detect a smaller wavelength. So lambda prime will be less than lambda. For the source of waves moving away from the observer, the observer will detect a larger wavelength, so lambda prime will be greater than lambda. So the Doppler equation is given by this, where the fractional change in wavelength, so that is the change in wavelength, the Doppler shift, divided by the original wavelength that was emitted from the source is approximately equal to the speed of the source or observer relative to each other divided by c which is the speed of the wave and this equation applies when v is much much less than c so the speed of the observer or the source is much much less than the speed of the wave. Also, the fractional change in the wavelength is equal or approximately equal to the fractional change in the frequency, which then is approximately equal to V divided by C. Here we have the spectrum of light from our sun. And the dark lines are the absorption lines. These are the absence of specific wavelengths of light which are being absorbed by the atmosphere in the sun. And here you have the spectrum of light from a group of galaxies that are one billion light years away. And the light from these distant galaxies is redshifted. That means they've shifted, the absorption lines have shifted towards the red end of the spectrum. And the wavelength range for visible light is from 400 nanometers for violet light to 700 nanometers for red light. So we're seeing a higher than expected wavelength for the light from distant galaxies. So this change in wavelength is a Doppler shift. So 
the source of the waves is our galaxy, which is emitting light waves. The observer is on Earth, which is detecting a larger wavelength for the light, which means then that the galaxy is moving away from the observer from Earth. So galaxies moving away from each other. So the redshift of light provides evidence that supports the universe's expanding. So as the redshift of light is a Doppler shift, we can use the Doppler shift equation where delta lambda is the change in wavelength and lambda and frequency are the wavelengths and frequency of the light emitted from the galaxy. V would represent the speed of the galaxy and C would be the speed of light. So from the redshift, the change in wavelength, we can determine the speed at which the galaxy is moving away from Earth. I'm now going to go through the proof of the Doppler effect equation. It's not a proof you need to know, so it's for those who are interested. However, the Doppler effect equation for light requires using special relativity, which is beyond, way beyond the syllabus. So we're going to be proving the Doppler effect equation for sound which then can be used as an approximation for light. So we have a source of waves, emitting waves of frequency f, and the waves are travelling with a speed c. So the time between one wave and the next wave is the period, and that equals 1 divided by the frequency of the waves. So in this time, the waves travel a distance of a wavelength, which is equal to the wave speed divided by the frequency. The source of waves moving at a speed v will travel a distance, which equals the speed times time, which is the time period. So is equal to 1 over the frequency. So the distance it travels will equal the speed the source is moving divided by the frequency. So for the source that is moving away from the observer, the new wavelength detected by the observer, lambda prime, will be larger than the original wavelength. So lambda prime will equal the original wavelength plus the distance travelled by the wave source in the time between one wave and the next. And so the original wavelength equals the wave speed divided by the frequency. So frequency equals the wave speed divided by the wavelength. If we substitute into this equation for lambda here and frequency here, get this, and that tidies up to this. And if we rearrange to put the wavelengths on one side, we get the fractional change in wavelength is equal to the speed of the source that's moving away divided by the wave speed. And this equation will be approximately true for when you're dealing with light. I'm now going to prove the Doppler effect equation for frequency. So F prime is the frequency detected by the observer, and that will equal the wave speed divided by the wavelength de detected by the observer. And we saw earlier that 
lambda prime is equal to C plus V divided by the frequency for a source of wave that is moving away from the observer. So if we substitute the lambda prime into this equation, we get this. So to determine the change in frequency, so F is the frequency of the waves emitted from the source and F prime is the frequency of the waves detected by the observer. Then we can substitute for F prime into here. So we can say the change in frequency we call F minus F prime. And then if we put all the frequency terms on one side, so divide by frequency on both sides, we get this. And if we simplify this, it will give us that. So we'll have C plus V minus C all divided by C plus V. So the C plus V minus C will give us V, which is divided by the C plus V. And for V, which is much, much less than C, the plus V will have a negligible effect. So that will leave V divided by C will be approximately equal to the fractional change in frequency.